What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. And it is time for one last, final last send on the waiver wire for y'all lunatics still playing fantasy football in week 18. This is, thank God, the last waiver wire video I will make for about three, 270 fucking four days. You love to hear it. You love to see it. But we're here for you till the very end, to the dirty end, all right? And uh, Monday Night Football is going on in the left quadrant of my eye holes. We've got you straight ahead, and I'm going to focus on you. That is my promise. So I'm ready if y'all are. Let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Oh, let's eat. <laughs> All right, so as per usual, there are 74 things in motion that may or may not ha happen by the time you see this video, by the time teams actually play in week 18. A lot of COVID cases going around right now, still injuries that we don't actually know. That's why we try to wait until the last possible minute to put it out on Tuesday. But we'll start off with the low-hanging fruit. And there, these backup running backs, man, listen, I'm, I'm not really a guy that believes in the whole motto of like your waiver wire wins you your league because it fucking doesn't. If you draft really well, you usually win your fucking league sometimes you walk away with some very good waiver wire pickups this year in particular because of the amount of injuries and the amount of players going on covid the waiver wire has mattered a lot more okay which has allowed for a lot of league winning type players all right so we have these running backs that would disagree with me on whether or not the waiver wire is where you win your league like mr rashad penny and boston scott and daryl williams and devin singletary and jaron patterson they'd all fucking tell me to hold these most of those guys are going to be owned in your league in any sort of respectable league Darrell Williams is off the wire. Rashad Penny's been been had owned. Devin Singletary too. But a couple of these guys might still be available for you. And the first two and the biggest waiver wire pickups of the week, in my humble ass opinion, IMHAO would be Boston Scott, of course, and Mr. Jared Patterson. So I was very high on Boston Scott going into the week. Had him ranked very highly. And then we had news that Jordan Howard was going to be active. And when we did my Q&A Assault video for y'all this weekend, I had a lot of questions about Boston Scott, and I told y'all to sit him because Jordan Howard was going to be active. I thought he was going to be a starter and play a bigger role. 30 minutes before kickoff on Sunday happens. Boston Scott reports come out that he's running with the ones. He's going to be the starter. He's going to get the majority of the work. And thus, I moved him up the rankings beforehand, but I already fucked a lot of people probably because of the whole Q&A Assault happens on Saturday, whatever. Boston Scott goes a little bit nutty. Finishes as the RB5 on the week 86 total yards 18 touches two touchdowns jordan howard was active he did get 11 carries but the philadelphia eagles are basically the single most run heavy team over the second half of the nfl season man they are doesn't matter who their running backs are they're running it and 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 running it so miles sanders is still going to be out he'll be back for the playoffs they said but for the remainder of the regular season we have boston scott leading the way back there so he is my number one pickup on the week followed closely by jared patterson who also filled in and finished as an rb1 this week in fantasy the rb12 he went 12 for 57 in a touchdown on the ground but more importantly caught all five of his targets for 41 yards antonio gibson was out jd mckissick's been on the ir now some tricky shit here gibson did not practice last week and then he got ruled out because of COVID. So he got placed on the COVID IR list. I'm starting to think the teams are just realizing that these players are injured. There might be some rule where like they get an extra roster spot if they put them on the IR rather than being injured and they're just like faking tests. I wonder if if they submit their COVID IR test results or if they just relay to the NFL which players tested positive or not. I wonder. Najee out here winning chips. Congrats to everybody that had Najee going. Anyways, Antonio Gibson's still a coin flip to play next week because he did not practice at all, which tells me he's kind of far off from playing. He's dealing with an injury, and then he has the COVID thing to deal with. So it's possible that he misses the game, Jadim Kizik's out, and they get to play against the fucking New York Giants, the New Jersey soccer Giants, the worst team in the NFL. Like, they're so bad. So it's Patterson to fucking Jupiter in Week 18 if, if Gibson's out again. And then we look at the entire Tampa Bay Buccaneers situation. That whole thing is up in the air. It's like fucking... AB walking off the field, finger, middle finger, pointer. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm not going to try to make any corny jokes because they've all been dead, dead, absolutely killed on Twitter already. But Antonio Brown's gone. Chris Godwin's gone. This leaves the wide receiver situation up in the air. Mike Evans is, is bike. All right. We thought he was going to be inactive. Then we thought he was going to play limited snaps. Doesn't. He leads the team in snaps and routes and all that shit and balls out. So he's the one. 
But behind him, a lot of opportunity still there, right? A lot of it's going to go to Gronk, as we saw on Sunday. But this dude, Cyril Grayson, and then Tyler Johnson are the two backups. And both of them are near every down players. They were playing like 70 to 80% of the snaps on Sunday when Antonio Brown decided to go fulfill his carbone reservations. When we look at the two players, who do we want more? The former is more athletic when it's Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson comes out of Minnesota, great prospect. He's more athletic, but Cyril Grayson, who I admittedly don't know shit about, has parlayed his playtime into more production and upside. He had one catch prior to week 16. It was a 50-yard touchdown back in week eight. He's gone for 81 yards in the last two games in both week 16 and week 17. He also had like 14 rushing yards in week 16. He scored a touchdown in week 16 as well. He's being targeted very heavily. Grayson's super undersized, 5'9", 183, but that's kind of exactly how Tom Brady likes his guys, all right? I was going to make a joke about Zendaya being the GOAT and them having that in common, but just it's not something I'm prepared to do yet. Tyler Johnson has occupied the slot since Chris Godwin's been out, actually. So that's interesting because they're putting Tyler Johnson, who's bigger, he's kind of built like Chris Godwin, into the slot, whereas, you know, a lot of times you'd equate smaller guy, slot guy, bing, bop, bing, boop, bop, not happening. Tyler Johnson, slot guy. So I would say Johnson is a better pickup in a PPR league. And a half PPR kind of a coin flip, right? I don't want to think too hard about it, right? We'd say Tyler Johnson, the, the obvious pickup, more athletic, better player, have more experience. But Tyler Grayson's been the one that's actually churning out production with it. Johnson's getting more targets. So again, I think he's a little bit better of a PPR play, but I think both of them are worth owning as is the entire Tampa Bay backfield. All right. So we've got Leonard Fournette out. Ronald Jones losing people chips this week. He's dealing with an ankle injury, which he's getting an MRI on. They have no idea if he's going to be back or not. I think it sounds kind of bad, so I think he's probably going to be out for this week. If he is, Keyshawn Vaughn is dealing with a rib injury, and Bruce Arians said he's hopeful Keyshawn Vaughn will play. Behind him, Le'Veon Bell's like the only healthy running back. They said they're crossing their fingers for Gio Bernard to come back. So what you need to know for the waiver wires, obviously Ronald Jones is owned already. Keyshawn Vaughn becomes a priority pickup, as does Le'Veon fucking Bell. Uh, if Gio comes back and is active, I would assume that pretty much makes Le'Veon Bell irrelevant because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing against Carolina, who have a good run defense. They'll get a lot of their players back from the COVID list, okay? So those are like the top guys you need to be looking out for. We have Boston Scott, Jared Patterson, and then the Tampa Bay backfield, Keyshawn Vaughn, Le'Veon Bell, Rex Burkhead, whatever. He's a workhorse. Tennessee's very tough run defense, and I just am not, I don't fucking fuck Rex Burkhead. Braxton Berrios It's kind of like my wide receiver one this week, ahead of Cyril Grayson and Tyler Johnson, if, if, if Elijah Moore misses this week. Elijah Moore might be available on your waiver wire. So I think both of them are intriguing pickups. Braxton Barrios is one of those guys that's good at football. I actually need to stop saying that. That's like an annoying phrase that everyone in, on fantasy Twitter uses. Like, oh, he's just good at football. Like, yeah, it's crazy that a professional football league is filled with a lot of guys that are good at football. The fuck do you expect? All right, Braxton Barrios, good at football. Really big game. Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, both out. Michael Carter, Got sent out with a concussion, which makes a couple other players intriguing. I believe Tevin Coleman should be back because he was on the COVID IR list, but Ty Johnson's a good pass catcher. We had Austin Walter playing a big role. I'm probably staying clear of the entire New York Jets bike field for this one. But Braxton Barrios, good pickup if Elijah Moore's out. Won a lot of people a lot of leagues, okay? So a lot of Braxton Barrios. A little breakfast is the uh, most important meal of the day. Boom. Baker pick. Underdog play of the, underdog play of the week was Baker over 0.5 interceptions. He stinks. He, whoo, he stinks. Braxton Cheerios doesn't stink. I forget what I was saying. Some, I was connecting somehow breakfast to Braxton Cheerios. It was going to be terrible anyways. So shout out to Baker Mayfield for ruining that. Uh, Michael Gallup out with the torn ACL. Cedric Wilson becomes interesting. Zay Jones has been balling out. But Darren Waller is supposed to be back, so I'm not going to prioritize Zay Jones. Defensively, Indianapolis plays against Jacksonville. 15-point spread over under a 44. Uh, love Indy. I like Washington, six and a half point favorites against the Giants, who I don't even, they might just be rolling out Jake Fromm now. I think Mike Lennon got hurt, 38 point over under that I, you couldn't pay me, you couldn't give me season tickets for next year for me to sit at this fucking game. Uh, and then Arizona at home against Seattle, six and a half point favorites. I like that as well. So Indy, Washington, Arizona are my defensive streamers of the week that are not very widely owned. All right, uh, that's all I got for y'all today. That's the waiver wire for the 2021 season. Jesus Christ. Chase Claypool, what a waste of a fucking person on that field. That's it. All right. Uh, that's all I got to say. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. That's it. Goodbye.